welcome to this lecture on transition metal organometallic chemistry from principles to applications. In the previous lecture, we have seen a brief overview of the development of compounds in the realm of organometallic chemistry. We have seen the utility of these compounds, how these compounds were synthesized over times and what are the reactions that were used for making these complexes. We have also seen that the significance of these compounds were realized over time as many of these compounds were recognized uh, with Nobel prizes going to the inventors of them. Today in this lecture we are going to touch upon something very interesting. We try to find out why are these compounds so special? What are the properties responsible for making these compounds extremely good in catalysis? Now, as I mentioned in my previous lecture that organometallic compounds are extremely air and moisture sensitive and hence it may seem to one that they would be a nuisance to handle or deal with it and that one should stay away from it. But on the other hand, it can be seen as a great advantage of these compounds. These compounds being extremely reactive by virtue of their ability to react with air and moisture are very unstable. These compounds are extremely reactive and sensitive and hence they can do reactions which otherwise other compounds the stabler ones could not do. And then these compounds impart a different reactivity and dimension to what all compounds can do. And as I said in my previous lecture that one of the main attributes of organometallic chemistry is their ability to carry out homogeneous catalysis. Hence, in this lecture we are going to look for what are the causes of the reactivity for these compounds. As I mentioned that organometallic compounds are compounds with metal carbon bonds and they are extremely reactive and the reactivity arises from the polarity of the metal carbon bonds. That means that the metal and the carbon bond is polar. As a result, they have sort of a kind of dipole with metal being partially positively charged and carbon being negatively charged. And sometimes this polarity leads to the higher reactivity of these compounds. Now let us take a look at what kind of reactivity these compounds show depending on the kind of uh, polarity they have. The best way to start off is to look at the periodic table. Here we have periodic table and we see that various elements uh, form polar bonds with carbon. So where the metal is positively charged and carbon is negatively charged. Now in periodic table we have a, a first group which is alkali, then we have alkaline earth metal, then we have a series of transition metals, then we have metalloids and then we have non-metals and then the finally the noble gases. So what has been observed very interestingly that the metal carbon bonds of these elements show a particular trend. And the, the trend is that organometallic compounds of lithium, beryllium, magnesium, boron, aluminium in this region they show covalent multicenter bonds. Now these are very interesting kind of bonds. There is a covalent bonds means there is a overlap between a metal and a uh, ligand which is carbon uh, centered orbitals they are covalent but they are non-classical in nature. 
A non-classical bond means that it is not a conventional two-centered two electron bonds. So, they are multi-centered, many-centered, many electron bonds. So, these are a special kind of non-classical bonds that these uh, regions of this part of the elements in the regions of this part of periodic table make. Now, as for the extremely electropositive ones like sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium and fr francium, they are extremely electropositive and they make ionic bonds. So, the metal is completely in the ionic state and the ligand is also in, in the anionic state. So, there is no overlap as far as the metal and the ligand concerned. So, these are extremely ionic compounds uh, which is formed by the elements uh, from sodium to francium. Now, as for this region uh, mainly the transition metal and part of the alkaline earth metals they make covalent bonds. A covalent bond means that there is a overlap between a metal and the carbon orbital and this overlap can be of sigma types where there is a sigma bond as well as it can be of pi type where there is a pi bonds. So, many of these compounds uh, they not only make covalent, uh, covalent overlap, but they are able to form multiple bonds. That is kind of a specialty of this kind of uh, uh, complexes. These bonds unlike the multi centered ones are classical two centered two electron bonds that means two nuclei share two bonded electrons. Now, as for this region from silicon, uh, phosphorus, uh, zinc, selenium, cadmium till all the way to lead they also make covalent bonds, but these covalents are mainly sigma type and very rarely pi type. So, what it says or the metal carbon interaction is dependent very much on which on the placement of metal in which the carbon is bonding to and that can vary a lot. It can be ionic where it is completely uh, anion versus cation type of electrostatic interaction. It can be covalent, covalent can be a classical type two center two electron types or it can be a non-classical type which is covalent, but multi-centered multi electron bonds as well. Uh, Furthermore, between the covalent type interactions which are prevalent over here as well as in this block, there is also a subtle difference is, uh, by the fact that in the transition metal bonds, they are equally uh, possible between a metal carbon sigma bonds as well as formation of a metal carbon pi bonds. But on this region, they are mainly metal carbon sigma bonds and very rarely a uh, metal carbon pi bonds. And so, uh, what it says that uh, organometallic chemistry provides a very interesting approach for studying the interaction of metal with carbon and they are not all the same and they differ based on their placement in periodic table. Now, let us look at the metal carbon interaction. So, we have a metal orbital interacting with a carbon orbital. This interaction can be a sigma type which means that the metal orbital would be interacting with the carbon sigma type orbital of same symmetry. And hence, 
there is no uh, nodal plane between the internuclear axis. The interaction can also be pi type The next kind of interaction between metal carbon bond is of a pi type, where a metal d orbital can interact with a p type orbital of the ligand. So, this being a p type interaction there is a nodal plane along the internuclear axis so the, the kind of compounds which shows such interaction is a carbon type which is of this formulation so here we have a sigma bond as well as a pi type interaction and this pi type interaction is shown over here. The next comes a very interesting interaction uh, or which is very unique for transition metals and these are called delta type interaction. So, this was pi type interaction now there is a delta type interaction. Delta type interaction occurs from side and overlap of two d orbitals and the best way to depict them is given over here. So, there are two kinds of uh, nodal plane over here, one is between this, the other is across across the internuclear axis. So, there are two nodal planes. As mentioned that this kind of delta interaction is very special and occurs in only metal metal interaction in various transition metal complexes. So, an example of a compound having delta uh, interaction is Now, one I must say that these interaction sigma, pi and delta are uh, not independent of each other. Sigma for a pi interaction to happen sigma has to be present and for delta to happen sigma and pi has to be present. So, one of the interaction reinforces the other ones. Pi cannot uh, uh, happen independently of sigma and similarly delta cannot have uh, occur independent of uh, pi and sigma. Now, another important feature uh, one needs to consider uh, when they look at the reactivity of transition metal complexes is the electronegativity. Electronegativity is defined as the property by which the bonded pair of electrons is attracted by each of the nuclei. Now, this is a very interesting feature which results in polarity and polarity results in reactivity. Now, a seminal work in this area has been done by Pauling uh, 
in providing uh, electronegativity uh, a table for all the elements in periodic table. And it starts giving electronegativity with hydrogen 2.2 and maximum being fluorine for 4. Lanthanides have the range from 1.1 to 1.3, actinides from 1.1 to 1.3. So, we see that the electronegativity difference for the whole of the lanthanide uh, and actinide series is very less. Whereas, if one goes from left hand side of the periodic table to the right hand side of the periodic table, uh, uh, one can see that the range is huge. Lithium is 1, fluorine is 4. So, if you go across, across the periodic table, the change is 1 to 4. Whereas, if you go across the periodic table at the bottom, then the change is less pronounced. It is from 0 0.8 to 2.2. Also, one can see that if you go across the period, so that means that if you go down the group, the change in electronegativity A becomes less pronounced. Another interesting feature to note that for transition metal, the change is also for transition metal, the change is also not too significant from 1.3 to 1.7 from scandium to zinc. And hence, we need to see that how this change in electronegativity affect the reactivity of transition metal carbon compounds. Another interesting feature about electronegativity is that electronegativity of a, a metal or element change uh, with the hybridization. For example, carbon has a electronegativity of 2.5 in the Pauling uh, electronegativity scale. But what really turns out that this value of 2.5 on carbon uh, is something which is variable, which is very much dependent on type of hybridization that carbon has. For example, when carbon is sp Three, then its electronegativity is 2.5. When it is sp2, it becomes 2.7. And when it is carbon become sp, then it becomes 3.29. So, what, what happens is that the S character increases as one goes from sp3 to sp2 and electronegativity increases. So, 2.5 which is a commonly uh, uh, electronegativity of a commonly occurring carbon at sp3 hybridization becomes 3.29 and which is uh, comparable chlorine chlorine uh, sp2 value of 2.7 is comparable to sulfur so what it shows is that as the hybridization changes the uh, electronegativity of carbon can significantly change from 2.5 to 3.29. This is much higher than what has been observed for transition metal where it could uh, change by only 0.5 uh, electronegativity unit. Thus, the order of S CH acidity 
becomes C2H6 less than C2H4 very very less than C2H2. This carbon is CSP in the ethylene it is CSP2 and in ethane it is CSP3. Now, this becomes all the more important when one considers to explain the reactivity. So, what one sees that the reactivity of transition metal compounds would thus depend on the polarity and the polarity would eventually depend on the electronegativity of carbon in further would depend on what kind of hybridization the carbon was in. So, we see a sequence of chain of causes that can lead to different reactivity. Now, this is at the carbon end. So, here we have metal carbon bond and what we saw that electronegativity changes significantly with hybridization. Similarly, what are the factors that would change the electronegativity on the metal? And it turns out that oxidation state state of the metal significantly changes the its electronegativity. To illustrate this point, let us take a look at thallium. In its plus 1 state, its electronegativity is 1.62, whereas for thallium if it is in plus 3 state, the electronegativity changes to 2.04. So, we see that the polarity of this metal carbon bonds is very much dependent on the hybridization the ox of the carbon as well as the oxygen state of the metal. Now, comes another important concept which also leads to change of the bond polarity of metal and carbon and that is called group electronegativity Remember for the metal carbon bond we said that electronegativity dependent on on hybridization the next thing that is said is the group uh, that the electronegativity of the carbon is also dependent on the type of substituents. To give an example, for example, if I have a methyl group, the group electronegativity is 2.31. So, what it is? Here it is a sp3 carbon, CSP3 carbon bound to hydrogen atoms, it is 2.31. On the other hand, if we go to C F 3, which is carbon uh, again as 
carbon C S P 3 carbon bound to 3 fluorine atoms because of the electron withdrawing effect of the fluorine the group electronegativity of C F 3 goes up higher. So, it increases from 2.31 to 3.47 and which is almost comparable to fluorine which is 4. So, what we see that the polarity of the metal carbon bond can affect the reactivity and the polarity is dependent not only on the hybridization of the carbon, but also on the type of substituents on the carbon as well as on the metal front it is dependent on the oxidation state. Let us try to look at what else does it depend upon. The way the carbon is dependent on the substituents similarly group metal can also be dependent on its substituents. So, what we are saying that this bond being polar, the polarity depends on many other factors other than electronegativity. So, in this lecture I have given you a brief overview as to what are the reasons behind the extreme reactivity that is observed for transition metal organometallic compounds or uh, per se metal organometallic uh, compounds and what are the factors that are affecting it. So, with this uh, I conclude today's lecture and in the next lecture we are going to probe this a uh, uh, bit more in details and also look at what are the rules that are governing the uh, reactivity of these compounds. We would also look at is there any classification that can be made on type of complexes they are formed the way we had seen in this lecture that they uh, make different kinds of compound with metals depending on their location in periodic table. So, I look forward to uh, seeing you again in the next le lecture where we look at what kind of classifications, what kind of formulation, formalizations can be made of these compounds. I hope you found today's lecture beneficial. Thank you.